There's a host of gear channels out there on YouTube telling you what to spend money on and all that good stuff. Um, I watch them. I'm not going to pretend I don't. But there are certain things that pro photographers spend more money on than anything else. And I'm, it's more than non-pros do. Like We spend more on certain items than an amateur ever would. And the stuff you guys spend money on wouldn't be seen dead spending money on. So let's talk about that. We're going to start with the really obvious. We love a lens. Lenses are everything. Once you've been in the industry for a while and you've had lots of different camera bodies, you start to realize that they don't really make much difference. But the lens, ooh, this lens here, it's got a metal lens cap. Lens cap, lens hood. Look at that, listen. Canon just don't do that. It's got a huge focus though, look at this, and it's silky smooth. Look at that focus though, it just goes round and round. It's a 100mm macro, Zeiss Milvus Planot. It has a special coating on the lens, which is different to the previous version, which is the price difference. And that coating doesn't make it sharper, it pulls the highlights back a little bit. It gives you a little bit more dynamic range. The micro contrast is beautiful. There's no color cast from the lens. The rendering is amazing. It draws a beautiful image. Oh, it's a good lens. But we don't really care about the camera bodies. This is a 1DS Mark II. I mean, it does have a nice noise, but like, you'll see many a pro with a 15 year old camera with holes in the top of it, but with some beautiful lens on the front of it. The camera and the sensor, they've not done much in the last decade. It's all the same thing, but the lenses, and again, it's not necessarily new as better. Um, the lens I use most of the time is the Mamiya Seco from the 1980s. Um, but lenses, we, we just spend obscene amounts of money on them. But this is where we differ from amateurs. Amateurs keep buying new camera bodies. It's like they're a disposable item. Like, Camera brands bring out a new body every few months at the moment, like because, and here's why, they couldn't do it in the film days because it was a light-proof box. It was just a light-proof box and the film was the sensor. But now that, oh, we've made some upgrades and it's, people fall for it. Like, you need aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. They're the three settings you have. You've then got a raw sensor and a box. Anything else is marketing. And someone's going to talk about eye autofocus. They had it in the 80s. It was really cool and revolutionary back then, and then they stopped doing it for some reason. And then it started again. Uh, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. But yeah, we spend a lot, a lot on lenses, but we'll literally use a camera until it catches fire. Like it, It's like a mechanic's car. The next is lighting. Uh, and lighting modifiers. We are suckers for it. Let me show you this niche bit of kit. You, you might not have seen this before. This... This is my soft lighter. Uh, this was made in the 80s. These are beautiful. They were created, the light is bouncing off it. It's got a nice audio echo as well. Anyway, these were created for before 3D renders were a thing and people used to make a miniature model of what a new house might look like or like a new industrial estate might look like or skyscrapers. And they'd use this to light it with because it created perfectly soft sunlight the right catch lights, the right shadows. It's the most flattering sunlightish look, but with diffusion that you can get. It's not too sharp, it's not too soft. Beautiful catch light, great modifier. I will spend a fortune tracking these down on the internet. The other thing is, up here, this is my hazy light. Bronco make a hazy light and they make a cummy light. Both of them, beautiful lights, beautiful lights. They're just so good. There's nothing which competes with them. Now, there's now a German company that makes these. I mean, the German company always made them. But there's now a German company still making them. They're about 10, 15,000 pounds each. You put your Broncolor head on the back of it, your 3200 watt pack on there. Great bit of lighting kit. And we will, I will, I've got two of these. In, oh, there's one, see this black square back here? That is one with the grid on it. The grid's like gold dust. And this one here is the more modern version. It's not got a grid on it at the moment, but... We'll be using that next week on a job. Beautiful, beautiful light. Any pro photographer who's ever worked in a studio, if you tell them about a hazy light, you'll see them go and look all wistful and dreamy. And again, this is just another thing that we just throw money at. But then, and, and here's for context, this, this light up here, the modifier, very rare and expensive. The light, it's a broncola light for sure. And that's a broncola pack down here. There we go. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the screen whilst doing it. The pack and light cost me 500 pounds because they're from the 1980s. They're old, it doesn't matter. Light is light when it comes out of a broncola head. It's all good. Buy an old broncola head, good color consistency, smash it through that beautiful, beautiful light. 
Now, this is something I see, in, especially in our Facebook group. People go, oh, I don't understand why people buy tether tool cables. Neither do I. Um, <laughs> you can tell they don't sponsor me. I don't understand why people buy tether tool cables. Any USB cable is fine. No, it's not. But tether tool is certainly not the cable we use. This is actually an unbranded Area 51 cable. There's another company in the States called Cobra Cables. It's the same cable, I think, that's bought from the same place. Extremely expensive tether cables are worth their weight in gold. Don't skimp on tether cables. These here, you plug them in, they won't drop out at all, all day. Tethering all day long, not a single drop out. And this is from someone who tethers daily. Tether tools, they're not as good. They used to be, I don't know what's changed. I used to have no problems with tether tool cables. Uh, but since moving to USB-C, they don't work that well. So yeah, every 51 cables, Great brand, definitely something worth investing in. It's something that every pro photographer has. You won't see as dead with cheap tether cables. And there it is. That's what we will not skimp on. Let me know in the comments below what you refuse to skimp on. I'd love to know. Love learning from you guys. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.